We've got maximum power today. Welcome back to the off-grid garage here in sunny, hot Australia. We have almost 35, 38 degrees or something. You can see it in the VIM. Well, there, there's the ruby tag. It measures there. This is south. And this is the only position where it is in shade, actually. I'm not sure where else to put it. Anyway, today we want to talk about heat. It um, it may be a bit loud in here because all the inverters are running. I have um, stopped charging this morning and turned everything on at around 10 o'clock. And it is now close to 12. There's the irrigation pump as well. Nice. Because I wanted to have maximum load on the system again. Because today we want to have a look with the infrared camera to all the junction boxes, all the cables, all the systems and see where we have to improve our work a bit. Maybe we can find some hotspots as well. So we need maximum power on the system then. This, um, the junction box, the combiner box of the west roof up here, this is my main concern because it is up in the ceiling and um, all these metal panels up there in the top of the ceiling, they are unisolated and the sun is really coming down. The electrician has actually suggested to put a insulation panel there on the roof maybe a meter long or something across the whole top of the roof to um, yeah get a bit rid of this heat. So let's have a look at this combiner box first because I think we will find something. Okay, I switch over to the uh, mobile phone now. Okay, let's have a look what's going on here. Yes, this is what I have seen already. So we can see we've got almost 80 degrees in this spot there, 80 degrees here that is insane, right? This is so hot. Let's have a look at the roof here. See what we can find. 66 only on the metal, but it, it may reflect a bit of the heat. But still you can feel, you can really feel the heat coming down here from the roof as well. So there is definitely a hotspot. So the hotspot is exactly here on this third uh, fuse holder and you cannot touch it. It is really that hot. Yeah, and here we can measure the 70 degrees. See, that's not good. 60 here. But then we've got 70 here. And then it gets colder again. So definitely the third from the right is a hotspot. Even I re I've replaced the whole um, fuse holder. But still, it is so hot. See, the cables are right here, 45. I mean... The ambient temperature up here, the ambient temperature is around 60 degrees already uh, from the metal. So definitely one of these insulation panels up here will help with that. I have seen this before with the infrared camera. I have replaced the fuse holder. It didn't make any difference. I have replaced the cable and got rid of the, got rid of the um, ferrule. You can see it. It's the bare wire doubled up and then going into the fuse holder didn't make a difference and there's only 10 amps going through these fuse holders so it's not like we are talking about 50 60 amps here that is 10 amp 10 amp per cable that is not much still we see this really hot area here so i think the the main problem is maybe this fuse and this fuse and the one in the middle the sandwich fuse gets all the heat now so what I will do is I replace these two and these two with breakers. Yeah, I have I have already bought um, five, eight, nine, nine, sixteen amp no arc DC breakers here, and they will replace. I'm going to replace all the fuses in the junction boxes. So I have now replaced. Uh, two of the fuse holders with a circuit breaker here on the right. This is for the most right string and you can see the other two fuse holders have been removed here and one of the cables is bare wire the other one is ferruled. And I'll leave it as it is for the moment. I want to see if there's a difference in heat generation in this area here. And this was exactly the location where we could see the hotspot. So, but as you can see, this is a bare wire and it is double folded and then put into the breaker terminal. Okay, so we have now replaced 
these uh, four fuse holders with two breakers, double pole breakers. We turn them on for tomorrow morning. And very keen to see the infrared video from tomorrow and see if we still have a hotspot in this location. But I don't know what else to do then. I mean, it is a hot location here with a metal roof just above the switchboard. But why don't we see the hotspot on the left here, but only in this area on the third position? It, it should be fine now. It should be totally fine. Oh, wow. Look at this difference. So you can see the, um, the two circuit breakers here I've mounted last night. They are pretty much blue. They are cool. And the fuse holders, look at this, 73 degrees. Holy shit. And interesting to see that none of the cables, either with or without ferrules, are actually heating up going into the circuit breakers. So it is definitely coming from these uh, fuse holders. They are heating up quite a lot. That is a difference. Okay, the plan was to replace the fuse holders anyway with circuit breakers. But um, yeah, I would never have thought that. So obviously the internal resistance of these fuse holders is far higher than in the um, breakers. They are pretty much, they are pretty much cool. I mean, that is a difference. And roof space is above 70 degrees Celsius. This is the blank metal up here sitting on the roof. Okay, then um, let's see if we can measure anything. So here the moving part is coming from the top, so the main terminal is actually on the bottom here. Now we go on the bottom plate and here on the bottom plate and we are measuring 40, 43 milliohms. 43 milliohms, yeah. Well here it is different, the bottom plate actually comes up and the main terminal is here on the top. So we need to measure from the top terminal to the other side, top terminal. Okay, let's see if we can make sense out of all that. 11.5 milliohms. Well, that means that we have a loss of 4.3 watts per fuse holder, but only 1.5 watts per breaker. So that is the huge difference. And then also considering we have 10 of them close together up in this tight and hot roof space. This is like 45 watts of heat loss with these fuse holders. While we have only 11 watts of loss with five of these breakers in the same space. Yeah, this is the combiner box east roof, but we can see we have used uh, ferrules up there. Uh, to the breakers and nothing here on the underside. See the electrician didn't put any ferrules on here on the underside but these were the cables I had already prepared for them and let's have a look in the infrared camera and, and compare top and bottom. And this is the combiner box of the east roof. Yeah, here we can see this so 55 around 55 degrees at the top and if we only have a look at the bottom here, we can see 50, so that's 5 degrees colder, cooler, what we have. So it could make a difference actually to not using ferrules in these clamp terminals of these breakers. So I'll go and remove all these ferrules at the top and double up the cable and push it back into the, into the circuit breaker. And then we see if this makes a difference actually. So around 55 degrees we have here at the top. I'm now working on the combiner box east roof and um, as we could see in the infrared video we had about 55, 58 degrees up here in this area and I want to take off the ferrules of two of the cables here and see if this makes actually a difference and we get um, not as hot temperatures anymore. I'm, I'm still not convinced this is the problem because we are talking about maximum of 10 amps going through a 4 millimeter cable, including ferrules, into this terminal here. It shouldn't create such a high temperature. I think 
this is still related to the hot ambient temperature we have here in the garage, but let's do it for the sake of testing. I will also take this cable here and double it up. So this is now nice and flat and can go back in the terminal. And I'll do the same for the negative as well of this breaker. Oh, it is a bit short. It is a bit short. Again, it is off. Okay. So now again, you can see the red um, ferrules and this breaker doesn't have them anymore. Yeah, you can see it. So bare wires into the clamp terminals should be fine. We don't have any ferrules down here. Okay, I would say let's wait for tomorrow and see how we go. You have a good night's sleep <laughs> and see you tomorrow. Okay, we still have around 55 degrees. Oh, we are looking at the uh, combiner box east roof now and there's no change. I have replaced this cable here. Now, I have taken off the ferrule of this cable to see if that makes any difference, but it doesn't. See, this one is with ferrule and this one is without and it has the same color. It's the same temperature. There's no difference either with or without ferrule. And to be honest, I wouldn't expect this because it is only 10 amps maximum, which goes through one of these cables uh, and 52 here at the bottom. But again, we've got ambient temperature of around 38 degrees here inside the garage. So extreme temperatures. So, and this is the combiner box in the carport. And here we can actually see a hotspot of 50 degrees where the red cable, the, the positive cable is connected which goes to our isolator inside the garage. So the fuses seem to be all right. They are a bit hot down here. What are we talking about? 47 seems to be all right for me because we've got already 35 degrees outside. Maybe an insulation panel here at the top will help as well. But here the hotspot is definitely the red cable of um, which goes inside the garage. Over here we've got 50 degrees here. I think this is still okay. They are, yeah, they are warm. You can feel it, but it's not like 80 degrees we have inside. And I just realized I've totally forgotten to um, have a look at this hotspot here of the positive exit from the bus bar, from the positive bus bar there. But I've totally forgotten to fix that last night. What I will do is I will take this cable off here and put it on the other side of the bus bar. There's a 60 millimeter screw terminal as well. So it actually turns the cable inside this terminal then and it gives it a different contact area. So maybe that's fixed already. I mean, it's not like this one is hot or so, not at all. It could be the ambient temperature here as well. Who knows? What do we have? 41 outside the garage, 33 inside the garage and 33 as well inside the battery. So this is all good. And this is probably peak temperature now as well, so it doesn't get hotter today. Yeah, and this is this is where the Ruby tag is. I've shown you this before, I think. Um, so it sits in the shade, but it is still... Uh, where else can I put it? It is, it is hot anyway, <laughs> so it is what it is. So at this location, it is 41 degrees. Under the patio, under the roof, it's uh, 35 degrees. Full shading, full covered from the sun, isolated roof, 35, and there's 41. So potentially the actual temperature is somewhere in between. But it is hot, it is hot. So I have now changed the positive cable from this side of the bus bar to the other side here. I haven't changed anything else. And let's have a look with the infrared camera if this makes a difference. 
Okay, and here we go. Uh, that is actually funny that we still have the hotspot on the left hand side even there is no cable connected anymore. I wonder if this is just a reflection of the brass bus bar. And it was never a hotspot because the cable didn't feel hot or something. Never. What do we here? What do we have here? 42 degrees, that's fine. We've got 35 outside. So that is not a problem. I think we can leave it as it is now and close the distribution box here. See there this hotspot? This is the Dean rail reflecting heat from somewhere else. And we are now looking at the combiner box in the big shed. We've got 44 degrees on the cables as hotspot, which is not a hotspot. Again, 35 degrees ambient temp temperature already. So this all seems to be fine. And funny enough, the breaker on the right here is actually the coldest because this is the last one to uh, get full sun. It's in the shade in the morning on this position, so the others have more time to heat up. So I would say this one here is totally fine. And here, this is our isolator box with the four main uh, breakers. So east roof, west roof, big shed and the carport. And we can see here the west roof breaker is actually the warmest with about 60, 60 degrees from the cable. And all these cables have ferrules, bottom and top. So I may go ahead here as well and take them all off and put the cables as bare wires inside the circuit breakers. But I will start with this breaker first here with the west roof because this is our hot spot. So 61 degrees right now. And I want to see if this actually improves without ferrules. And even they all have the ferrules connected, I want to take off these four, input and output, and see if there's a difference actually. Um, I didn't know how to take off these ferrules, but it's fairly easy actually. You just squeeze them in the opposite direction, and then you pull, and they come off. And there it is. Just comes off. I think the cables are a bit long now. See, there's the copper sticking out a bit of, and usually I would cut the copper, but I'll leave it for the moment. It is just for testing purposes anyway. And if this all works, I put them, I'll take them out again and cut them off a little bit, just a few millimeters here, so they fit perfectly and nice flush into the breaker. Maybe not. This is definitely far too long, so I'll cut this off straight away. Definitely very, very tricky to get all the cables, all the strands correctly into the breaker here, into this terminal. It is still a tiny bit long, but oh god, it is so hard to get it exactly the correct length it needs to be. And I need to renew the heat shrink as well. It looks shit. I don't like this. Okay, this is just for the test. I'll, I'll do the same at the bottom here. And then we see how it goes tomorrow. <sighs> I don't like the look. Okay, I think it's in. Screw it. All right. Okay. Okay, so bare wires here, everything else has ferrules and the same at the top. So we have to wait for tomorrow now. The sun comes out, heats everything up again, and then we have another look with the infrared camera and see what's going on. Really keen to see if there's a difference at all. And let's have a look at our isolator box where we have taken off the ferrules last night as well. This is the west roof isolator. These two cables have no ferrules anymore. Entrance and exit, no ferrules, but they are still the hottest. Because this is where most of the current goes through. Okay, so there's no difference 
with or without ferrules in this location here. Nothing at all. Still 65 degrees. And let's see if I can get this as a... So here we have all four solar charge controllers. Um, interestingly, the west roof controller is the hottest, bottom left. You can see it with about 50, 58, 59 degrees surface temperature. This one here is the east roof, almost as hot. Even both controllers have the same load, so they are running on 3.5 kilowatt at the moment. And up here we have the, um, the carport on the left and the big shed on the right, which is the coolest, has the smallest solar connected and runs the coolest of all four. And here again, this is the west roof on the left and the east roof on the right. So the east roof looks a lot cooler, right, in this picture here. So we can see we've got like 56, 57 degrees on the left. It's searching for the hottest spot there, 57 degrees uh, surface temperature of the solar charge controllers. And this one looks a lot cooler, but if we focus only on the east roof controller, we can see this one has also around 54, 55 degrees, so it's only two degrees cooler. But here it looks like on the right it is much cooler. So these infrared pictures look far too spectacular. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't get fooled by these pictures. It looks like one controller is super hot while the other one next to it is a lot cooler. But this is not the case. They are of almost the same temperature. They are all at 55 degrees around. It just looks different on the infrared picture. And having a look at the connections here from the west roof controller. See the two cables on the left. This is our outgoing connection to the battery. That's a 2 times 25 millimeter cable with ferrules. The incoming solar on the right has no ferrules because at this point of time I didn't have any in this size. Yeah, here you can see the ferrules, no ferrules there. And, well, they are getting really hot. They are getting hot. So I am actually considering some sort of fan installation situation here. So I don't think I need this in winter time or any other time than summer. Yeah, here we can measure the temperatures again. 60 degrees on the west roof, 57 on the east roof, 53 on the big shed, should be the coolest, yeah, and 54 here on the carport. There you go. Show the MPPT some love. Yeah, yeah look at this, 42 only instead of 58 yeah this one as well here yeah, 41 and 42 makes a difference this fan okay i'll um i'll work on a solution um not sure yet so a quick temperature check here on the bmss um this one claims 42 degrees and 32 that's the Haltech BMS here on the bottom shelf. I'm not sure. You can see the balance cables there. One goes there into the breaker and the other one goes into the battery. Uh, here we have it. 34 and 32. This is T1, T2. This is just max min. It says it even there. Max temp, min temp. Andy, come on. Okay, so we've got 32 and 34 degrees. And the balance... The balancing is on the way at the moment. You can see the green lights flickering there. There's the balance um, LEDs. So the temperature of the balance resistors 42 and the MOSFET 35, all good. Let's check on the JK BMS. Battery temperature 133, battery temperature 237. Here again, one sticks in the there, sticks in the breaker, and the other sensor goes into the battery. So 33 and 37, MOSFET 37, that is all good. And the overkill BMS at the top has got one sensor in the breaker and the other sensor goes between the batteries there. So we've got 39, uh, I've got four temperature sensors apparently with this BMS. 
So I'm not sure which one is which. Yep, there for temperature sensors. Yeah, and the Ruby tag on top of the battery shelf here, on top of the top shelf battery. That's how it must be. Uh, 36.3, that is fine. Garage 34 and outdoor 40. Yeah, welcome to sunny hot Australia. Okay, let's have a look at the cabling situation in the duct. This is the big slotted duct which is full of cables yeah, along here. You can see a bit of warm cables here, 50 degrees cable temperature. I can see this is the solar coming from the west roof. There's a bit of a hot spot here, 60, uh, 55 degrees cable temperatures. And these are the cables going up into the ceiling. So we've got 55 here as well. This is all solar cable coming in, 16 millimeters. And they're carrying around 50 amps at the moment. And down here, these big cables, this is our 70 mil to the inverters. This is the inverter itself, which has like 50 degrees on the surface. Cables down here, under 50 degrees. This is just a reflection bottom right of the aluminium sheet. And we are now having a look inside the DC compartment in the top of the shelf. And we can see here uh, temperatures of 60 degrees for the cable, which are coming from the solar charge controllers and then going to the bus bar through the breakers first. This is the circuit breaker here. We've got 56 degrees on the circuit breaker contacts. And this is the shunt, 53 degrees. And here the DC compartment with the Raspberry Pi, 54 degrees on the top. That's the DC-DC converter, 48 volt to 12 volt. And here's my USB charger. So we are now looking at the breakers between the solar charge controllers and the main bus bar system. And uh, the second breaker from the right here which is so hot which shows us 50 degrees at the cables is the one from the west roof. Currently they are going 68 amps through this cable for about 40-45 minutes. Uh, the one on the right is the east roof. They are about 65 amps so a bit less and the other two are the big shed and the carport. And here having a look at the solar charge controller of the west roof showing the outgoing cable. So these are the same pair of cables on the left which we have just, uh, just seen at the breaker location. And we have here like 43 degrees. So here on the MPPT there are ferrules and here in the breaker are ferrules as well. So what I will do is I will take off the ferrules of these two cables tonight and then we retest again tomorrow and see if this makes a difference at all. Uh, why should I actually wait until tonight? I can do this right now. I can isolate the battery from this breaker and we can isolate the incoming solar from this breaker. So turn off the solar charge controller and then we can remove these ferrules here which are the incoming ones. So I have turned off the, um, the MPPT via the software module so we don't switch any breakers here under load so there's no load on it anymore and we turn this one off and this should turn off our west roof solar charge controller completely let's um, do a measurement yeah. 1.9 1.8 volts okay that's fine just squeeze and pull so now the big challenge is to put this all back into this terminal without losing too many cores. As far as it goes. It is a tiny bit too long now, but for our test here. All right. First one. Okay, so if we turn this one off as well, just for safety. I don't want to touch any neighboring contacts. So I'm turning off this one as well. Squeeze. And 
טוב. היה ליס. ניס. Didn't lose any of the cores of the strands. They all went in. All right. We're all back in business. Turn these ones on. The solar back on. And we are back. Okay, let's give it um, 20 minutes or so and a full power. Then we have another look with the infrared camera if we can see the difference from the input to the output. I haven't shown you the output, but it was actually the same as the input. So it was like 50 degrees. So now we will see if there is a difference at all. Okay, so we are now charging from the west roof um, through this breaker without ferrules. Bare copper strand into the circuit breaker. And we have still 50 degrees. So there's no difference. I'll show you the underside as well this time. Yeah, so um, I cannot see any difference between no ferrules and ferrules down here. And this is even a 35 millimeter cable while the one at the top is only 25. So all the cables from here going to the bus bars are 35. That's what I did as per design. So I can easily replace the breakers to larger or smaller ones. And this is always the same 35 millimeters gives me the 100 amp connection from the breaker side to the bus bar. So this is just per design. Because I thought if I replace the cables here from the breakers to the solar charge controllers from 25 to 35, it may make a difference, but it actually doesn't. So if I measure up here, we've got 50, 52, 55 degrees, hottest 49 degrees. So it's only five degrees difference. And we've got boot laces here or ferrules and we've got nothing here bare just bare wire So this is not the issue But there are 70 amps going through it sometimes when the Sun comes out So they are really peaking. I mean if we have 40 degrees outside and like 35 36 inside the garage and I measure like 55 degrees here on the cables on the breaker Well, this is just what it is you know, otherwise I need to have an air condition in here to keep all these systems cool. I'm actually looking into this at the moment. But yeah, um, I mean, yeah, they are, they are warm. These cables are warm. Okay, my friends, I think that's it for this video. Um, I filmed this all in the last couple of, the last week. I would say and Frankenstein this all together so I was trying to make as much sense out of all this as possible but as you can see with the heat building up in the system then some of the problems are easy to resolve by just replacing the fuse holders with circuit breakers and some others don't do a difference if we remove the ferrules or use bare wires it, it doesn't make a difference or in the case of the circuit breaker it doesn't do much difference it's only a few degrees mm. but is this because we're using a 35 millimeter at the bottom and a 25 at the top for the same current and then if you have 35 to 38 degrees inside the garage here there's not much you can do about heat building up in these systems except you introduce some active cooling Either with a fan, as we have seen, this was quite a good result actually, or you introduce an active air conditioner and cool down this whole area here. I mean, we have enough energy in summertime here to run an air conditioner in here, just wasting the energy and blowing cold air onto the power wall and battery shelf. But if this actually helps with the cables inside the compartment here, I don't know. I guess we can only try. And as I said in the video, this is only necessary for a two months maybe three months occasionally when we have these hot temperatures outside during fall winter and spring it is not necessary to actively cool anything here uh, just as a very quick thought i have actually thought about this for a while see this metal beam here going up all the way to the roof space that would be actually that would be actually ideal to build a wall and separate the whole power wall and battery shelf from the rest of the garage. And then we could get this wall all the way 
this way in between the two garage door and built like our own power or storage and energy room here inside the garage. And then it would make sense to put an active air conditioner in inside this room. On the other side, again, it is just for a few months is it worth doing this? At the moment, it's not more than a brain fart, but I'm actually thinking about this for a while. <laughs> so, and then we could also double insulate this whole roof area here. Uh, let's see, let's see. I've got this strong feeling we are not done with our power wall and battery shelf here. Not for a long time. Okay, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here, for all your generous donations, if small or large. Thank you very much. It is all much appreciated. Also, thank you for hundreds of comments under my videos, which I'm all reading, but I'm not able to respond to all of them. I'm really sorry. A lot of people are still sending me emails. Guys, I'm not able to respond to all of your emails and I'm certainly not able to help you with any calculations or design problems you may have with your personal project. Leave all these comments down under the video so everyone can see this and we can use this huge community brain to help you out with your personal problems. And in terms of the recent spam, scam, spoofing attacks on the channel here, totally normal happens to all the channels. They are copying my YouTube logo and creating a new account with a different, with a totally different channel name. So if you see that, please do a right click and report this to YouTube, not to me. Don't send me any emails. I'm aware of that. It's nothing I can do. It's a YouTube problem mainly. It's not something I can control. So please be very careful out there and I'm not going to contact you through any other social media platform here unless I tell you specifically here in the video and in the video description. If there's nothing in the video, nothing in the video description, but there are comments showing up that I'm doing a giveaway or some free gifts or something, it's 100% it's a spam. Report this to YouTube. Okay, this is all I have for you on this hot sweaty day again. And until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye.